Hi darlings, I'm Violet and today we're going to be recapping my entire facial feminization surgical journey, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's get into it. I started this process in July of 2023 because I had just hit my two year HRT anniversary and I still felt a hella dysphoric about my face. So I called literally every single surgery center in New York City that offered FFS to see who I could get in with the fastest. One thing about me though is I do have trust issues. So I booked consults with multiple different surgeons to get multiple opinions and see who I trusted to do this with. One of the surgeons did a 3D scan of my face to try to show me what I would look like before and after. And honestly, that just made me feel more dysphoric. Yeah! But another surgeon offered to do a simultaneous top surgery with my FFS, so I booked with him. The question I get asked the most about surgery is, what work did you get done? So I'll tell you. I got a genioplasty or chin reduction. I got a lip flip or lip lift. And I got a tracheal shave, which is basically where they reduce your Adam's apple. And I did get a rhinoplasty, a nose job, not because I had gender dysphoria surrounding my nose, but I had a deviated septum before, so it was harder for me to breathe. The surgeon recommended I get that fixed so I could breathe better. And as a severe asthmatic, I said, yes, please. After you decide on a surgeon and what surgeries you're gonna get there's a lengthy process of getting insurance approvals and basically proving to a bunch of people that you actually are transgender which is so much fun and also so expensive but i made a video explaining that whole process you can check it out on my tiktok or instagram shameless plug eventually though the day of my surgery january 8th arrived and this is where things get interesting my partner and i woke up at 5 a.m to go to the hospital and i'm a very squeamish person the idea of getting cut open doesn't really appeal to me so the entire car right there I was like internally screaming. I got out of the car and immediately threw up into a trash can at 5 30 in the morning on the streets of New York City right in front of an emergency room. Immaculate vibe. Thank god I had my partner there because I was literally crying and throwing up. I don't think I would have been able to go through the surgery if they weren't being the nicest person in the world to me so thank you Ezra. <laughs> Eventually I made it into the hospital, went through a bunch of intake stuff and was taken to a room right outside of the operating room where I had to meet with a bunch of doctors and surgeons upon which I threw up again. I wanted to take some cute videos of myself before surgery so I can make little transitions with them later, but I was such a wreck. All I managed was this selfie where I look so miserable. Bruh. But they gave me some anti-nausea medication and before I knew it, I was climbing onto the bed in the operating room. Anesthesia might be my new favorite drug. I don't know if I can say that, but it felt like I blinked once and they had finished the whole surgery. When I woke up, it felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders. I was just so happy that the surgery was over, but this is where things started to go not too well for me. One of the first things I noticed was that I couldn't really move my mouth. It was stuck open, so it was really hard to talk. The nurses gave me a paper and pencil so I could communicate, and you'll notice that one of the first things I wrote down was, I can't move my jaw. And when the doctors were told this, they were like, that's weird because we didn't operate on your jaw, but it's probably just swelling and it should go away on its own. So I tried my best to ignore it while I stayed the night in the hospital. Huge shout out to my bestie, Sunny, who stayed the night with me. I love you, bitch. The thing about having surgery is that there are a lot of pills you have to take afterwards. And the thing about not being able to close your mouth is that it's really hard to swallow. So every three hours, the nurses would come in to give me my medication and I would gag and slurp down these pills, which was really awful and still no one thought to be like, hey, maybe something is wrong with your jaw. The next day though, I was feeling a lot better. So I was able to get myself dressed and go on a walk all under my own power, which felt really good. And then I was discharged. And when I got home, I immediately crashed and put on Barbie while my support crew figured out my medication schedules. I am so grateful for that. The next few days were really hard though. I was in a lot of pain, but mostly it was hard because I still couldn't close my mouth and I had a lot of medication to take and food to eat. So every time I would have to take a pill, Ezra would hold a towel under my mouth to catch all the water that spilled out and yes I was on a smoothie only diet for seven days. Four days after I got home we called the hospital to tell them that I still wasn't able to close my mouth and they continued to say that it should go away on its own but they would take a closer look at it when I came in next week for my follow-up. So after eight days of hell I finally had my follow-up appointment where my surgeon tried to move my mouth with brute force and even as he was trembling with the effort my mouth would not budge. It was at this moment that I learned my jaw had been left dislocated after my surgery and even though I told multiple different hospital staff members about this I was gaslit into believing that everything was fine and it would heal itself on its own. This did in fact trigger one of the 
biggest mental breakdowns of my entire life and I was sobbing in the car afterward. We tried to go and get mac and cheese to cheer me up because it's my favorite food and I had just been cleared to eat solid foods, but I still couldn't chew. So I choked on mac and cheese, which was just incredibly humbling. The next day I had an appointment with an orthopedic surgeon to get my jaw relocated. And this man said he had never seen anyone whose jaw had been left dislocated for nine days before. So I felt really special. I begged this man to put me under anesthesia, my new favorite drug, while I got my jaw relocated, but he insisted on doing it raw. I can confidently say that is the most pain I have ever experienced. Even after my jaw was relocated, my mouth still wouldn't close, so they had to put screws in my gums with rubber bands to re-secure everything which was so much fun. Afterwards though, I finally got to see my face with my mouth closed for the first time after surgery and everything was still really swollen, but I was just so happy my face worked again. That joy was kind of short-lived though because my mouth got so swollen from having screws in it and I'll just let her explain. I've been trying for an hour now to get these fucking rubber bands back over my screws on my mouth and I got the one I'm bleeding so much. Mouth screw era was really not fun. Thankfully, I did get them removed after another two weeks, but it was around this time, however, that my mental health really started to decline. I had been recording various parts of my recovery because I thought I would want to look back on them later, but after everything I had been through, I was just so jaded and overwhelmed and quite frankly, really sad. It became way too painful to document anymore. It took about six or seven weeks for the swelling to go down to the point where I started to look like myself again. And with that, my mental health was starting to get a little better too. At the time I'm recording this video, it has been nine and a half weeks since I had surgery. My swelling has mostly gone down, but it'll still take a full year for my face to completely settle. My jaw closes all the way now, which is great. But unfortunately, after I got it relocated, I can no longer open my mouth all the way. So I'm currently pursuing physical therapy to address that because you guys i can't eat bagels right now and what's the point of living in new york if you can't eat bagels there was a time during my recovery where i felt like i might regret having ever gotten surgery just because of everything i had been through but now I can confidently say that I have no regrets about any of it. Not having a prominent Adam's apple has made me so much less anxious about being perceived in public. And I'm really happy with all the other facial feminizing procedures I got. I never wanted my face to look drastically different and it doesn't, so I'm glad. Oh, and I have boobs now, which honestly compared to everything I went through with my face was such a walk in the park, so that's fun too. My experience was especially difficult, but I do want to clarify that I know a lot of other trans women who have gotten these surgeries or similar surgeries, and I don't know anybody else who had their jaw dislocated. I never want my experiences to discourage other folks from pursuing gender affirming care, because even with all of the shit that I went through, I'm still so much happier now, and I wanted to share my experience to encourage other folks to take control of their bodies and pursue their own bliss. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful or at the very least entertaining and know that I love you a lot and I really appreciate you being here.